Hello grade 10 welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. I do math videos, I do science videos, so let me know in the comments below what you want to see in the next video so I can help you with your exams. In this video, we're going to be drawing or sketching a hyperbola. This is when I give you the equation of the function and you need to draw it for me. On the side over here, you can see the steps that I've laid out in order to draw the function. So it always works the same in my head. We look at the a value, which is the value in the numerator of the fraction. Remember, hyperbolas is dividing by x, so when x is in the denominator. We look at that numerator, and that numerator tells us about the shape. So we look at the pos if whether it's a positive value or a negative value. It tells us which quadrants we're going to expect to see the graph in. Then we draw in the asymptotes, the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Then we decide, or we look and see, is there x-intercept. If we make y equal to 0, we can solve for the x-intercept. If there is an x-intercept, we need to plot that, we need to label that. If there's no x-intercept, I want you to sub in any other point. So for example, x is equal to 1. Sub that into the place of x in your function equation and get the value for y and you're going to plot that point for me. So step one is always just looking at a and considering if it's positive or if it's negative. Now what do I mean by a? a is essentially this value over here. It can be a positive value. If it is, the function will look something like this. If it is a negative value, the function will look something like this. After we've decided on the shape, we're just going to draw in our asymptotes in a function, foil hyperbola in the form like this. y is equal to a divided by x plus q. Remember, x cannot equal zero because if x is zero, then the function will be undefined. It does not exist at that point. So for our vertical asymptote, which will run like this along the y-axis, x is equal to zero, that will be our vertical asymptote. So just along the y-axis where x is equal to zero. Our horizontal asymptotes are going like this. This depends on the value of q. So if there's no q, then it's plus zero. Therefore, your horizontal asymptote will be like that along the x-axis. But if this says minus three, for example, then your horizontal asymptote is where y is equal to negative 3. Just read very carefully. Then we're going to get our x-intercept. We make y equal to 0 and solve. Just remember that if q is equal to 0, so remember if we've got a function like this, for example, if I've got y is equal to 2 over x, like this. You see there's no plus q here. q is 0 then there's no x-intercept. Right, that should make sense. And I just included here, remember, there is not a y-intercept either because x cannot be 0. If there's no x-intercept, such as in this function over here, y is equal to 1 over x, there's no x-intercept, right? As you can see, a horizontal asymptote over here, the blue line, that blue line over there is where y is equal to zero. Okay, there's no x-intercept. But when I plot the function, I can't just have two lines randomly like that. I need another point. We need to show another point. So I subbed in x is equal to two. By subbing in x is equal to two, then I get one half. So where x is two, y is a half, and I have another point for the function. An alternative is you can just draw up a quick table for yourself in order to plot the function. So we've got x, We've got y, you can choose a few values over here for your table. So you can go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and let's just go up to 2. And then we can get a few coordinates to plot. Just remember that you do need to plot points, some points. In this example, so we're going to do y is equal to x, it's 6 divided by x minus 3. So first of all, immediately we see it's a hyperbola because we're dividing by x. Then remember I said the first thing that you look at is the shape. So step one is look at the shape. And I have a positive 6 over here. So I said a positive a value means that my graph will lie in these two quadrants, remember? So that one over there and this one over here. In other words, it won't be here and it won't be here. Okay, positive a value will be in these two quadrants. That is awesome. So now that we know that, we can move on and we can plot the asymptotes. So if you look at your function, we know that x cannot be 0. Because if x is 0, then 6 divided by 0 is undefined. 
So x is equal to 0, that is my first asymptote. That is my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote. So when I go onto my little Cartesian plane now, I know that I can, at the position where x is equal to 0, I can put in an asymptote like that. Okay, so there's my dotted line at x is equal to 0 to represent my vertical asymptote. And then my horizontal asymptote. Remember, in this case, it'll always be my q value. So over here, my q value is negative 3. So at y is equal to negative 3, that is my horizontal asymptote. So again, I can go to my Cartesian plane and already I can say, okay, awesome. I know at negative 3, so you're going to use a ruler when you do this, at negative 3, there's my second asymptote. And we know, remember, the graph is not going to exist here or here because of the a value being positive. The graph will be here in this quadrant over here, and it'll be over here. Remember, it's going to approach this dotted line but not touch it. Okay, what do we do next? We want to get the x-intercept by making y 0. There will be an x-intercept in this case. So we're going to make y 0, 6 divided by x minus 3. Remember, we're solving for x, the x-intercept. Take the negative 3 over, or you add 3 to each side. So 0 plus 3 is 3. Gets rid of the 3 on that side. And please, 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 grade 10s, you need to solve this properly. So I'm just going to rewrite it over here to remind you. When you solve for a variable, and your variable's in the denominator, that x swaps places with the 3, okay? So x is equal to 6 divided by 3, so x is equal to 2. That means that my x-intercept is at 2 and 0. That's my x-intercept. So I can go and I can plot that. 2 and 0, that is over here. Fantastic. That is 2 and 0. Now, I know that my graph is going to, like I said, exist in this quadrant over here and exist in this quadrant over here because it's a positive value for A, but it's never going to touch the intercept. I also know that my graph has no y-intercept, so it's going to look something like this. And please excuse the fact that I'm drawing this freehand. It's going to curve like that. And this one is going to look like this, okay? It goes close to the intercept, but never touches it. If you feel like you need a few more points on your graph, you can do that. So if, for example, I want to plot the points where x is equal to 1, in the place of x, I put 1, like that. 6 divided by 1 is 6, minus 3 is 3. So where x is 1, y is 3. So where x is 1, y is 3. That is over there. Just to help you get the shape a little bit. But you do need to, you do need to label your intercepts. Okay, there we go. Right, in example 2, I've given you the function y is equal to negative 2 divided by x plus 1. Now, as you can see, I've given you a negative a value, just to show you that now the function is going to exist in these two quadrants. This is just something you need to remember. Then, if you look carefully at the function, you can see that my, my asymptote over here, remember, this is the horizontal asymptote, is going to be where y is equal to 1, and again, x cannot be 0, so that's going to be my vertical asymptote along the y-axis. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in those asymptotes. So remember, my function is y is equal to negative 2 over x plus 1. So this over here, my q value, that is my horizontal asymptote. That's going to be over here, like that. And then my vertical asymptote, x cannot be 0. So my vertical asymptote will be x is equal to 0. That is along the y-axis over here. So we draw those in. That means that the function doesn't exist at those points. The function will approach those lines, but will not touch those lines. There will never be a y-intercept. Right, then, going back over here, we can see 
that I need to now get my x intercept by making y zero. So I'm going to sub zero in the place of y. We've got negative two divided by x plus one. If I take plus one over, or if I subtract by one on both sides, I get negative one over here, negative two over x. Just remember the x and the negative one swap places. So it's going to be x is equal to negative two divided by negative one. So x is two. Okay, there we go. X is two. That means two and zero again is my x intercept so if we look at my graph over here two and zero that is where my x intercept is two and zero remember because this is a graph with a negative a value my graph is going to exist in this quadrant over here and this quadrant over here so we're going to draw it like this remember it approaches that axis but never that that asymptote but never touches it it goes through that point and then it comes down like that approaching there but never touching so you're going to draw it a lot neater than i have um, and then this one over here is going to exist in this quadrant it's going to come like this approaching but never touching approaching but never touching okay and we just show draw the arrows to indicate that my function is continuing that way and again if you want to sub in another point so for example if we want to know x is equal to negative one so in the place of x i'm going to put negative one so it'll be negative two divided by negative one plus one that is two plus one which is three then we can plot a little bit more accurately we can make our graph look a bit nicer so where x is negative one y is three so there we go and see that i've plotted this a little bit badly but you know what i mean the most important part of it is you labeling your axes so there we go you labeling your your not your axes your intercept sorry um, and then getting the shape correct and getting it in the correct quadrants, which is therefore getting the shape correct. Hope that makes sense. I have done example three for you. So let's go through it together. I've selected the very basic function y is equal to three divided by x. As we can see, we have a positive a value, which means we know that the function will be in these two quadrants over here, that one over there and that one over there. We can see that again x cannot be zero so our vertical asymptote has to be where x is equal to zero so along the y-axis i've highlighted it in green we can also see that our q value here is zero so therefore our um, horizontal asymptote is y is equal to zero which i've highlighted in orange if we draw the function in like that so approaching our asymptotes but never touching we can't really leave it like that and expect to get full marks because this function over here could represent y equals 2 over x, y equals 3 over x, y equals 7 over x, 10 over x. I don't know. Remember, as long as it's a positive value, we know that it exists in this quadrant and this quadrant. But I need to know exactly what function I'm dealing with. So you need to give me another point. The only way you're going to give me another point is if you sub in a value for x. So over here, what I've done is I said we need any point. So I subbed in x is equal to one. If x is one, so we put in the place of x, we put one, three divided by one is three. So therefore where x is one, y is three. I sub that point, I plot that point and I label it over there and there we go. Now with using that point and with using the fact that I know where my asymptotes are, so my asymptotes are at x is equal to zero and at y is equal to zero and I've got one point over there, I can easily find my equation again. But if you just give me this graph existing in these two quadrants with no points, I cannot tell you and I cannot know that it belongs to this function with this equation. I hope that makes sense. If you want to see a video where I go over how to get the equation of a hyperbola and then maybe videos where I do the interpretation of a hyperbola. So the domain, the range and other videos like past paper questions that are a little bit more tricky. Let me know in the comments below.